wrong for telling my girlfriend to cover up her body when strangers enter the home. Oh, you are treading on thin ice, my friend. Here we go. I am full. <laughs> this is the first sentence. I am fully aware that the title sounds sexist, but hear me out, please. My girlfriend comes from a wealthy background and grew up with maids, chefs, chauffeurs, etc. I was raised in a completely opposite environment and still adjusting to dating someone like her. When we're not with her parents, we spend a lot of time at one of her apartments. Here's the issue. My girlfriend likes to walk around home barely wearing anything, which is fine, awesome even, but she does this even when the help are around. For example, last month, her family hired a new driver for her. He stopped by the apartment to introduce himself and she was only wearing her underwear. Keep in mind, this is the first time they've ever met in person. I felt awkward, he was visibly awkward, and she didn't give a shit at all. She was casually chatting to him while scrolling away on her phone. She does this all the time. She doesn't think she needs to wear any decent amount of clothes at all when people that work for her are around. She will casually walk around wearing just a thong or a tiny crop top. Just a crop top, nothing else. Okay, see, you saved yourself. The title was a little fishy, but now I hear I can understand your concern. She even does this with complete strangers. One time, she opened the door for the delivery guy wearing only a see-through gown. You could see everything. Afterwards, I talked to her about it, and she was utterly confused as to why I felt uncomfortable. Then she laughed and told me to stop being jealous, baby. She even said that I'm unreasonable. We had another discussion about this yesterday, and I told her that she probably wouldn't feel comfortable if I did the same. She said that she doesn't understand why I care what her staff think and that it never even crossed her mind that this is inappropriate. She told me that she only does this in the comfort of her home and not in front of actual people. An example, people that don't work for her. She got kind of mad at me and vented to her friends. According to all of them, I'm weird for having a problem with this and I'm an asshole for telling my girlfriend to cover up. Somehow, I'm the villain of the story. So, am I really the asshole here? Story time about how my boyfriend lied about having a terminal disease so that he could marry me. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. I repeat, this is not my story time. I was sending me on Instagram. My now husband, who I actually ended up marrying, we met through a dating app exactly one year ago. From the beginning, he totally love bombed me. After we gave each other our phone numbers, he would text me every single day at night. He would call me beautiful and give me so many compliments. Some part of me knew that he was love bombing me and that it was wrong, but I also enjoyed it because I hadn't been treated like that in a very long time. He asked me out on a date and we actually lived two hours away from each other. So he made the trip all the way down to where I lived. We had an amazing date. We talked for three hours. Then we went to the beach and stayed there for about six hours. We told each other our life stories and he told me that he was looking to settle down and not just someone to date casually. This was obviously my goal too, so it was perfect. We were really compatible and we made each other laugh a lot. One of the first things that he made very clear to me was that he had money and lots of it. He owned two companies and was starting a third one. He took care of his entire family and even bought his parents a house. After dating for two weeks, he asked me to be his girlfriend and of course I said yes. He would come down to visit me every single weekend. I was in nursing school at the time and he even helped me pay for my education. I mean, this man was perfect, or at least I thought. After almost a month, he started talking about marriage. I knew I liked him a lot and I was definitely falling in love with him, but I just wasn't ready to talk about marriage. And I told him that. He said that he was really disappointed that I wouldn't consider marrying him. I told him that it wasn't that and maybe even date for a few years before we got engaged. This is when he got really upset and out of nowhere, he just yells out, I may not have a few years to live. He then pretended to break down and start crying, but no tears were coming out of his eyes. I knew it was strange behavior, but I couldn't believe that he would lie about something like that. He explained to me that he had a terminal disease, but wouldn't tell me what it was and told me that the doctors only gave him a year to live. Obviously, I was shocked. I couldn't even stop crying. Then he told me that that's why he wanted to get married to me. He wanted us to get married and pregnant before he passed. Then he pulls out a huge diamond ring. This man was asking me to marry him after only a month of dating. And unfortunately, I said yes. Part two is up. Part two of how my boyfriend lied about having a terminal disease so that he could marry me. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. I repeat, this is not my story time. I was sending me an Instagram. After he told me that he had that terminal disease, I couldn't say no to him. So I accepted the engagement ring, but it would be the biggest mistake of my life. He was so happy about us getting engaged, but all I could do was cry because he told me he had only one year left to live. Before I knew it, he hired a wedding planner and he even started planning our engagement party. Mind you, we had only been dating for a month. This is around the time that he became really possessive. He was getting more and more jealous of my friends, and if I was going to hang out with family or friends, he would guilt trip me into staying with him because he only had a year left to live. I felt like I was trapped. We were both super involved in the planning of the wedding, and it was actually really nice for me to have that time with him, but then other times he would get really jealous. 
For example, I have a group of friends and we usually have dinner every Friday night. My friends and I are really close and when they found out about my engagement, they flipped out and told me that I shouldn't get married. Somehow my fiance caught wind of this and told me that I couldn't hang out with my friends anymore, especially the guys in the group. He also made me promise that I wouldn't speak to them after he passed away. Even my family didn't want me to get married to him. My family would question me all the time, asking me what his terminal disease was, and to be honest, I couldn't even tell them. Every time I brought up the subject to my fiance, he would get upset and ask me if I didn't believe him. I told him my family and I just wanted to know what it was that he had. He told me that he had a tumor. He didn't say where or if he was getting any treatment, and I basically knew not to ask him about it again. I was so stressed because my family didn't want me to marry him, my friends didn't want me to marry him, and now I couldn't even see my friends, and I even had to drop out of school so that I could spend all my time with him. Now don't get me wrong, I was in love with him, but knowing now that he was going to pass away, part of me was putting up a wall so that I wouldn't be so devastated when he passed. I mean, what else could I do? The wedding came around really quickly. My dress was beautiful, the venue was absolutely stunning, the food was delicious, and my entire family and friends were there. It was actually one of the happiest days of my life. We had an amazing wedding and the reception was so much fun. I basically danced with my husband all night long. For our honeymoon, we went to Europe. Of course, we stayed at the best hotels, we would go shopping and eating at the best restaurants, but he became even more controlling and jealous. If a man happened to pass by and I looked at him, he would get upset at me. Anytime I got on my phone to do anything, he would ask me what I was doing, and every time I would call my mom, he would get really annoyed. It got to the point where I stopped calling my family because I didn't want him to get upset. Part 2 is up. Part 3 of how my boyfriend lied about having a terminal disease so that he could marry me. Disclaimer is not my story time I sent me on Instagram. During the honeymoon, he became more and more jealous. So finally, when we got back home, I asked him about his disease. He never looked or acted sick. He never went to the doctor or even took any medication. The more I would ask about his terminal disease, the angrier he would get. Finally, one day I told him that I didn't believe him. That's when he locked me in our bedroom for two hours. He sat outside the door and told me the truth. He knew that I was too good for him and that I would never marry him. So he knew he had to make up a lie to actually marry me. And that a terminal disease was the first thing that came to mind. He knew I was studying to be a nurse and that I would fall hard for that. I told my family and friends, they said they knew that something was off with him. He keeps apologizing and wants us to stay together. He pays for everything and I have absolutely zero money and no job. But he's still controlling. I feel bad for him and I can tell that he really loves me. I think I should ask for a separation. What do you guys think? What should I do? Story time about how my boss severely bullied me because she was envious of me. This clearance is not my story time, it was sent to me on Instagram. I work at a really high-end nail salon. I'm talking about two to three hundred dollars per manicure and pedicure. So it's very high-end and our clientele is very rich. My goal has been to open my own nail salon, but it hasn't happened yet. Obviously, I don't have enough money to open it, so I needed to get a job. This new nail salon had opened up near my house. It was the prettiest thing I'd ever seen in my life, so I definitely wanted to get a job there. I went in for an interview with the owner of the nail salon. During the interview, she was really nice, but kind of gave up that queen bee vibe. Like, she was the popular girl and she didn't want anyone else to be popular or pretty. I got a call from her a week later and she asked me if I could do her nails to see how well I did. And when I did her nails, she was impressed. She said that I was really good and that I was hired immediately. I started working and within the first month I had the biggest clientele list. A lot of clients were asking for me to do their nails. And when other clients heard the other clients asked for me, they also started asking for me. You know, word of mouth. I was extremely proud of myself. Not only was I making a lot of money, but I was actually building a clientele base that really loved my work. Don't get me wrong, the other girls at the salon were actually really good, and so was the owner. If we were really busy, sometimes the owner would pick up any walk-in clients. And one of the walk-in clients came in and asked specifically for me. The owner told her that I was busy and that she would do her nails. That's when the girl said that she would come back whenever I was available. My boss quickly snapped at the girl and told her that she was just as good as I was. The worst part was that she said it loud enough so that everyone in the salon could hear her. The client clearly felt uncomfortable but agreed to it anyway. Later that day on my break, I could hear my boss talking in the kitchen. I decided to wait outside and see what she was saying. Sure enough, she was talking about me and telling one of the other girls that I thought I was too pretty for this job and that I didn't have any experience. She also said that I probably just watched YouTube videos in order to learn. Number one, I have 10 years of experience. And number two, it doesn't matter if you watch YouTube videos as long as you're learning. This obviously hurt my feelings and I tried not to cry. Then I realized that she did it on purpose. She was speaking really loudly and she knew that I was about to go on break. That's when I realized that she was definitely trying to bully me. The following day, I get a phone call from her telling me that I should stay home. When I asked or why she said that she hired a new girl and she said in fact don't come at all this week and she basically hung up on me part two is up part two of how my boss bullied me because she was extremely envious of me disclaimers is not my story time i sent me on instagram after she told me not to come into work for an entire week because she was hiring a new girl i decided to go in the following day and just make sure that i still had my job I walked in and said hi to everyone. This is when, once again, I catch her talking trash about me with the new girl. She told the new girl that I thought I was better than everyone and that she should definitely stay away from me. But again, I didn't say anything just because I didn't want to have any confrontations with my boss. I waited a few seconds, knocked on the door, and entered. I asked her if I could speak to her and she said yes. I told her I couldn't stay off working for a full week. This is when she said, okay, fine, you can come in tomorrow. 
but you're gonna have to train the new girl because she has zero experience. So essentially, I wasn't gonna be doing anyone's nails, I was gonna be training the new girl. This made me upset, but I knew that I needed to play my cards right. So I said yes with a smile on my face. I trained the new girl for the entire week and she actually turned out to be pretty good at nails. The following week, she was even taking on clients for gel manicures. Now, I thought this was gonna make my boss upset, but it actually made her really happy. Finally, I see that everyone's starting to pack up their stuff to leave early. I asked one of the girls what was happening and she said that everyone was going to dinner together. I said, oh, okay. And she said, weren't you told? Uh, no, I was not told. I knew this was another intimidation slash bullying tactic from my boss. My boss had even invited the new girl and not me. They all left, went to dinner, and my boss pretended not to even see me when she was leaving. The following day, I come into work and one of my clients is already waiting for me. We sit down at the table and my client begins to tell me that my boss was talking trash about me before I came in and that she even did it in front of the clients. She informed me that my boss was talking trash about my body, my hair, and my clothes, and that I was basically a JLo knockoff. I quit on the spot and took all my clients with me, over 22 women. I opened my own salon two months later. I'm now her competition. She sent me a message apologizing, but I haven't responded. What should I say? Story time about how two men tried to kidnap me after work. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. I sent me on Instagram. I just turned 19 years old and I've been working at a coffee shop for six months. Unfortunately, sometimes I have to close the coffee shop all by myself, but it didn't really ever bother me until now. My parents, on the other hand, really don't like for me to close the coffee shop by myself, which of course makes total sense. At first, I thought they were just overreacting, but they weren't. My parents would usually pick me up after my closing shift, but they would always arrive 15 minutes before I actually had to lock up just to make sure that I got out safely. Two weeks ago, my dad had to go on a business trip, so my mom was the one that was going to have to go pick me up by herself. A few hours before closing time, my mom texted me saying that unfortunately the car wasn't turning on. She told me that she would call AAA, but I told her not to worry and that I would just get an Uber home. She kept fighting me on it, but I managed to convince her to just stay home. I kept my mom in the loop the entire night about the closing shift, and finally, I called my Uber. The Uber was 10 minutes away, so I just waited inside until I saw them pull up. As I was gathering my things and putting on a jacket, I hear a knock at the door. When I turn around to look, it's a guy in a suit. He begs for me to let him in so that he could get a coffee. I apologized and said that we were closed for the night, but that he could come back in the morning. Then he started begging more and more. I actually felt really bad for him because he looked like he was freezing, so I decided to open the door and let him in quickly. He ordered an espresso and I quickly made it. I handed it to him, he paid really quickly and told me he was on his way out. Suddenly, another guy walks in through the door because I forgot to lock it behind me. And when the other guy walks in, the first guy told him to go straight to the cash register. Instantly, I knew that I was being robbed. But the guy with the suit was definitely the mastermind behind everything. He told me to sit down and that as long as I didn't do anything, he wouldn't hurt me. But I remembered I had the Uber still on the way. But it's not like I could pull out my phone to check if it was near. There was a panic button underneath the counter under the register. But I was sitting two tables away from it. Suddenly, I feel something in the back of my neck. The guy that had just been at the cash register comes up behind me and starts blowing on my neck. He started saying how pretty I was and that I looked way better in person than in picture. The guy in the suit chuckled and said, yeah, she is pretty in person. Suddenly, he grabs me by my arm and tells me that I'm leaving with them. I begged and begged for them not to. That's when I remembered my dad gave me a tip in case someone was ever trying to pick me up. I threw myself to the ground and acted as dead weight. It made it really hard for the one guy to pick me up. Luckily, I could reach over and hold onto a pole that was right near the register, and I held onto it as tight as I could. We struggled for about 30 seconds. Suddenly, the other guy comes in front of me, bites my hands down so that I could let go of the pole. Instead, I kept holding on tight. Out of nowhere, my phone starts to ring and I realize it's probably the Uber driver. I told the guys that my Uber driver was waiting for me outside and that they would get caught. The Uber driver must have seen what was happening inside because he started beeping really loud. The guy in the suit puts me in a chokehold and I begin to pass out. Part 2 is up. Part 2 of how two men tried to kidnap me after work. Disclaimer is not my story time, is sending me an Instagram. The man in the suit had me in a chokehold, but I could hear the Uber driver beeping as loud as he could outside. He had already seen what was happening to me and probably already called the cops. The man in the suit dragged my body towards the back exit. His partner had already left. This is when I saw my opportunity. I knew where all the pans and pots and knives were. I reached for a pot and I hit him as hard as I could. But unlike how it happens in the movies, he did not pass out. Instead, this made him angrier, but it gave me a second to run towards the front of the store. As soon as I did that, I could hear the police sirens pulling up toward the front of the store. This made the man in the suit back away from me. I ran to the cops and I was safe. Unfortunately, the two men haven't been found. And I was interrogated for hours. My dad came home from the trip, but now I'm terrified that these guys know where I live. Also, what picture was he talking about? The police think that they had been stalking me for weeks, if not months. I'm terrified and I don't know what to do. Help me. Story time about how I broke the news to my very religious family that I was single and pregnant. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. It's sending me an Instagram. My parents are very religious and super strict. I was never allowed to have boyfriends or even talk to boys or even have guy friends. My girlfriends only could come over to my house and I could never go over to friends' houses. I was never even allowed to go to parties. Anytime I needed to make a phone call, my parents would monitor the phone call. So there was absolutely no way I could get away with anything. And I never even lied to them. I got straight A's and graduated valedictorian from my high school. When I turned 18, I went to the university my parents wanted me to go to. My parents are very rich and have 
have lots of money. So I knew that they would get me into whatever university they wanted me to go to. When I finally got accepted into university, I begged them to let me stay on campus, even though we're only a two hour drive away from the university. I wanted to have privacy. And of course, I wanted to feel like a grown up. After months and months of convincing my parents, they finally said yes. They even got me a private dorm so that I wouldn't have to share my room with anyone. For the first time in my life, I had independence and I could make my own decisions. But still, all in all, I was a pretty good girl. I would go to class, go study at the library, and then go back to my dorm. I never went to any parties, but I did start making friends. One of these friends was a really wild girl. She was in my dorm building and she pretty much did everything I ever wanted to do. She was wild and crazy and I just wanted to be like her. She started inviting me to all these house parties and I didn't know how to say no. I went to one of them and I met this really cool guy. At least I thought he was cool at the time. We spoke all night and he tried to make me believe that he was this perfect little boy. And of course, I fell for it. After hanging out a few more times, we did the dirty. And then he ghosted me. This was the first time I had done anything like that and I was really heartbroken. I was convinced that this guy was going to marry me. That's how naive I was. After the last time I'd seen him, I realized that I hadn't gotten my period. And when I checked my calendar, it had been two months since I got my last period. Now you may ask why I didn't notice this before. Pretty much because I was studying all the time. I never really gave myself any breaks and I was constantly reading books and doing homework. I basically lived in my books. When the realization of not having my period for two months came in, I was devastated and I knew that I was pregnant. I ran to the nearest drugstore and got a test. When I saw that it was positive, the first thing I did was call the boy. But like I said, he had ghosted me. But this time he did answer the phone because it had been a few months. I told him that the test was positive. He told me the baby wasn't his and then he hung up. Unfortunately for me, I had no idea where he lived. I decided to Google his name and apparently he didn't even go to the university that I was going to. He was just a friend of some guy that went there. Finally, Christmas break arrives. I was four weeks pregnant and I showed up to my parents' house. Part two is up. Part two of how I broke the news to my very religious parents that I was single and pregnant. Disclaimer, this is not my story time, I was sending me on Instagram. I was four weeks pregnant, the guy that got me pregnant had ghosted me, and I knew I had to go home for Christmas from university. I had thought of how I was going to tell my parents and I even wrote them a letter. I was simply going to hand my parents the letter as soon as I got home. But when I got there, they were so happy to see me. I hadn't been home for a few months and I could tell that they really missed me and I just didn't want to spoil the moment. So instead of telling them the first day, I waited until the second day. I came out from my bedroom and my mom asked me why I looked so pale. This is when I just said it. I'm pregnant. My mom instantly began to cry and asked me what happened. I could hear my dad coming down from the stairs. I turned around and said to him, I'm pregnant. When my dad saw my mom crying, he sat down on the couch and said nothing. And this was scarier than him yelling at me. My mom joined him on the couch and then I sat on the floor right next to them. That's when I just decided to tell them the truth. From beginning to end, I told them exactly what happened. Then my dad said, don't worry, we will help you. I could not believe it. And as soon as my dad said that, my mom stopped crying and said, yeah, he's right. We're your family and you don't need that guy. The only thing my dad asked from me was to stay in university. And I told him that there was no way I was going to let my education go to waste. I could tell my parents were really disappointed in me, but they didn't say anything. We had all our family coming over for Christmas dinner, and my dad announced it to everyone then. Instead of acting the way I thought he was going to act, he was almost happy. He wasn't angry, but he was disappointed, but he didn't hide it like a little dirty secret. My family congratulated me, and they were all very happy. But of course, they started asking all these questions. When I told them that the father wouldn't be involved, they were really upset. Luckily, my aunt was dating a private investigator at the time. I gave her the baby daddy's number and name, and she gave it to her boyfriend. He came back with a bunch of information for me. Apparently he was a dropout and didn't have a job, but he came from a very wealthy family. So my parents and I decided to get a lawyer and ask for child support. When I had the baby, my family was so happy. He is literally the light of our lives. He is so loved by his grandparents and I'm so grateful to my parents. We all live together and my baby is five years old now. His grandpa and him are best friends and they do everything together. Now the baby daddy wants to be in my child's life, but I don't know if I should say yes or no. Up until last year, he didn't want anything to do with us. But now that he sees that the baby is older and he plays, he wants to be involved now. I don't know if I should say yes, but I also feel bad depriving my child of his father. Merry Christmas and what should I do? Story time about how my husband ran away with his brother's wife on their wedding day. Disclaimer is not my story time, but send me an Instagram. My husband has been a serial cheater for the five years that we've been married. He started cheating on me two weeks after we got married. And no, he never bothered to hide any of it. Anytime I found out about an affair, I would ask him and he would be honest and tell me that yes, he was having an affair, but that he would end it. But of course I knew that once a cheater, always a cheater. So I never, ever, ever trusted him after that. I wanted to even the playing field, so I decided to have my own affairs. You see, I wanted to give him a taste of his own medicine so that he could see what it felt like. And he actually got psychotic when he found out that I cheated on him the first time. He even locked me in a room for five hours and questioned me. I told him that if he was going to cheat on me, then I was definitely going to cheat on him too. I know that this is incredibly toxic, but it was the only thing that I could think of to make him change his ways. 
That's when he finally decided that he would try to stay faithful to me for as long as he possibly could. But what do you know, two weeks later, he was already cheating on me again. He had a really rowdy group of friends and they would always go out to bars, so this is how he met these women. Of course, he'd tell them that he was single and these girls had no idea that he was married. So it's not like I could get mad at them. My husband is close to his brother and they would always hang out. When his brother got engaged and he met his fiance, I could tell that my husband was eyeing her from head to toe. That's when I told him that he needed to stay away from her, not only for me, but for his brother. And he swore that he would never ever do that to his own brother. But he could definitely do it to his wife, of course. We would see his brother and his fiance all the time. We would have dinners together and that's when I started noticing that she was also staring at my husband. I would catch them constantly looking at each other. Eventually, I told my husband's brother, my brother-in-law, about the concerns I had of his fiance with my husband. He laughed and even actually got mad at me for suggesting such a thing. I told him that he would regret it if he didn't take action now. A few weeks before the wedding, my husband started acting really strange. Part two is up. Part two of how my husband ran away with his brother's wife on their wedding day. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. I've sent him on Instagram. I noticed my husband was acting really strange before the wedding. He started going out every single night. He wouldn't tell me where he would go and he would leave his phone in the house. Sometimes he'd come back the following morning. A few days before the wedding, I decided to confront him about it. I knew that I didn't want to stress him out before the wedding, but at the same time, I couldn't live like this. I had this worried, sick feeling in my stomach every single night and I would barely sleep knowing that he was out doing God knows what. When I asked him what was going on, he told me that I was overreacting and that he was just playing poker with his friends at his friend's house. I told him to call his friend on speaker so that he could confirm his story. That's when he threw a tantrum. He started slamming doors and cabinets in the kitchen telling me that I was overreacting and that I needed to let him live his life. And he even mentioned divorce for the first time ever. He said he didn't want to be tied down to such a jealous woman. That's when I broke. I literally pulled out a list of all the women that he had cheated on me, the ones that I knew of, and I told him that he had broken my heart over 10 times that I knew of, and that I knew he would never stop, and that the only thing that was fair for me was to at least have him be honest. That's when he hugged me and started to cry, and that was the first time I had seen him show any emotion towards my pain. He began to apologize and told me that he never meant to hurt me that way. We hugged and we just watched a movie and everything was back to normal. But I knew that nothing was back to normal and that he was hiding something. Finally, the day of the wedding comes and he is stressed. From the moment he woke up, he was pacing in the house, sweating. He even had four cups of coffee. I asked him what was wrong and he said that he was just nervous for his brother. We finally head to the church where everyone is already waiting. And when we get there, the first thing I see is the bride. She's standing outside the church with the suitcase. Without even turning to look at me, my husband tells me to get out of the car quickly. Part three is up. Part three of how my husband ran away with his brother's wife on their wedding day. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. I said to me on Instagram. Without looking at me, my husband tells me to get out of the car as fast as I can. I asked him what was going on and he opened the door and pushed me out. That's when the bride jumps into the car with her suitcase and her wedding dress. And he drove off as fast as he could. I kept yelling at the top of my lungs. Of course, the entire family runs out of the church to see what's happening. That's when my mother-in-law told me that the wedding had already happened, but we had arrived late. And that right after they were married, the bride took the groom aside and told her that she didn't want to be with him. Of course, he got really upset and they got into a full blown out fight in front of everyone. When he asked her where she was going, she said she had a ride prepared. She grabbed her suitcase and apparently walked out. And that's when my husband and I pulled up. The groom and I were absolutely devastated. I kept calling my husband and he kept calling his wife, but of course they both ignored us. My parents-in-law were so upset that they even called the police to report his car stolen. This was in the hopes that they would at least find their car, but unfortunately nobody found the car on the streets. This led us to believe that they were probably hauled up at some hotel. This is when I remembered that my husband really liked this one hotel that was by his job. He always told me that he would go there for drinks with his friends. So my family-in-law and I show up. And as soon as we get to the hotel, I see my husband and his now girlfriend having lunch in the restaurant at the hotel. Of course, we confronted them. We were all yelling at the top of our lungs and the hotel kicked us out. Finally, my father-in-law was able to talk some sense into my husband and make him realize what he had done. Not only had he ruined our marriage, but his brother's future as well. His brother was beside himself, so depressed and kept crying. And my mother-in-law had to take a sedative in order to calm down. My husband came to his senses and told his girlfriend that what they did was wrong. He looked at me and begged me for forgiveness, but of course, I didn't speak a word to him. My now sister-in-law slash my husband's girlfriend, she decided to head straight to the airport and went back to her parents. It's been a few weeks now and my brother-in-law took her back. I still haven't forgiven my husband, but we're still living in the same house. I don't know what to do.
Story time about how my boyfriend is bullying me into losing weight. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. It was sent to me on Instagram. My boyfriend and I have been together for two months. He's a personal trainer, so he's really into fitness. When we started dating, I wasn't super fit, but I definitely was toned. Unfortunately, I got the Rona, so I got fired from my job because I couldn't work for two weeks. I was super sick and I really became depressed. I basically sat on my couch for those two weeks and ate a lot. Before I knew it, I had gained seven pounds. When I finished my quarantine, I finally was able to see my boyfriend. And when he first came into my house to see me, he looked shocked. He looked me up and down and said, did you gain weight? I said, yeah, I probably gained like seven or 10 pounds. And then he asked me how I could let myself go like that. I told him I was totally by myself, cooped up in my apartment and I had nothing else to do but eat. And that's when he said, and I quote, well, we need to get you back into the gym to get you in shape again. Cause I don't want a fat girlfriend. I laughed because I thought for sure he's joking, but then he said, stop laughing, it's not a joke. My stomach sank and I felt like I was gonna poop my pants. I started to cry and he told me that I shouldn't be a baby, that he's allowed to be honest with me about stuff like this because it has to do with him being attracted to me. So in other words, he wasn't attracted to me anymore. That's when he went into my room, picked out a pair of leggings and a sweatshirt, told me to get dressed and took me straight to the gym. He made me exercise for an hour and a half. Instead of getting upset about it, I decided Part two of how my boyfriend is bullying me into losing weight. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. It was sent to me on Instagram. After he told me that I was soft at the gym, I started to cry again. I told him that he needed to be more sensitive towards my feelings and that I didn't want to be in a relationship if he was going to be like this toward me. That's when he said that he didn't want to be in a relationship with me because I had gained weight and that's not what he had signed up for. That's when he told me I needed to look around and see all the fit women in the gym and that he could have any of those girls. I was in utter shock. I just couldn't believe that he was talking to me like that and I had never seen that side of him before. The more I cried, the angrier he got. But finally he said, okay, I'm sorry. Sorry, let's just do 20 minutes on the Stairmaster. That's when I told him I didn't want to work out anymore. Mind you, he had already had me at the gym for an hour and a half. That's when he said, fine, I'll take you home, but I'm coming back to the gym. The whole way home, he stayed quiet and gave me the cold shoulder while I cried. He pulled up to my house and I got out of the car and he literally sped away as fast as he could. He proceeded to give me the cold shoulder for the next two days. I finally broke and texted him telling him we needed to speak. That's when he said we could talk at the gym. I agreed and he went to pick me up. But the first thing he wanted to do at the gym was put me on a scale and weigh me. I told him absolutely not part three is up part three of how my boyfriend is bullying me into losing weight disclaimer this is not my story time it was sent to me on instagram he was trying to force me to get on the scale so that he could weigh me because he wanted to see how much weight i could lose in one week i kept saying no but then he said fine then he handed me a piece of paper and said here's the diet i want you to follow for the next four weeks I grabbed the piece of paper and just put it in my purse. Then he has the audacity to get mad at me for not even looking at the diet. He said that I was disrespectful and that I didn't even look at the diet and that it took him hours to write all of that out. And then he said the thing that crushed my heart. He would be embarrassed to take me around his friends and family with the way that I looked. As soon as he said that, I ran out of the gym and walked home. Of course he followed me and told me to get in the car, but I refused. I finally got to my house and he called me. I told him I needed some time away from him and that his behavior was extremely toxic and that if I didn't have a problem with my weight, neither should he. That's when he said that he was accustomed to only being with girls that were super fit and even had abs. He told me that at first he wasn't convinced if he should date me, but I had a really pretty face, and that he was willing to overlook the fact that I wasn't super fit. He's a total narcissist, but I'm still in love with him. I tried to break up with him, but he said no, and he's still insisting that we just go to the gym together at least. I don't even know how to respond to him. What should I say? Story time about how my husband's mistress tried to mace me and kidnap me. This is not my story time. My husband and I have been married for four months. So yeah, not very long. We dated for two years and everything was pretty much okay. At the beginning of the relationship, I had my doubts about him. I earn a lot more money than he does and he's always resented me for that. He makes comments and jokes about how I'm the one that brings the bacon home. Finally, I told him that he needed to stop doing that, especially in front of our friends and family. But other than that, we've had a really great relationship. I never thought that he was capable of ever cheating on me. We finally got married back in 2017. The wedding was so special and our family 
families were there. Our honeymoon was amazing and when we got back home, we both decided that we wanted to buy a house together. Or mostly like I decided to buy a house and he would give me some money. Obviously this didn't bother me because I knew it was our forever home, so I didn't mind paying for it and having him help me with the rest. After we settled into our new home, my husband decided that he wanted to get a better paying job. Obviously this made me really happy because it would give him more confidence if he was earning more money. He decided to switch to financing and he started working on Wall Street. Two months after getting married, he started earning way more money than I did. This made him so happy, but he quickly started to change. He only bought expensive designer stuff. One thing I did notice was that he never invited me to go to his office. So like the good wife I am, I decided to surprise him at his office with lunch. And when I got there, I was greeted by his assistant. I didn't get worried because I didn't find her very attractive. She looked very plain Jane and homely. But when I finally saw my husband, I asked him why he didn't tell me that he finally got his assistant. He told me that he just forgot and he didn't think it was important. So I let it go. But I noticed that his assistant was trying to be overly nice to me. And she was also asking me a lot of questions about my husband. But like I said, I didn't feel insecure at all just because I didn't think she was very attractive. At the end of the year, my husband and I are invited to the Christmas party. Of course, his assistant is there and she proceeds to get drunk and start telling me things like how I was so lucky to be married to my husband and how I should be more grateful to him. Obviously, I took offense. I went straight to my husband and told him what his assistant said to me. That's when my husband laughed it off and said that I was reading into it. Two seconds later, he's in his office with her yelling at her. Part two is up. Part two of how my husband's mistress tried to mace me and kidnap me. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. That's when I catch my husband yelling at his assistant. All I could make out was that he was telling her to keep her mouth shut when she was around me. Obviously, these were all red flags. I decided not to say anything for the rest of the night, but his assistant kept drinking the entire night. That's when my husband pulled her aside and told her to go home. She started crying and she tried to hold his hand. And that's when I knew it. They were having an affair. Mind you, I didn't suspect anything. I just thought she wasn't very pretty. She was very plain Jane. I didn't think that my husband would ever find her attractive. After she left the party, I decided to pull my husband aside and ask him what was going on. I asked him if he was having an affair with her and he told me the truth. He said yes. Obviously, this was really heartbreaking. We hadn't been married long. That's when he told me that he wanted independence from me because I was the one that paid for everything and that he wanted to feel like a man and that because I earned more money and paid for everything, he felt less of a man. Wow, great excuse. He promised to break things off because he had no feelings for her and that he actually felt bad for using her because she was falling in love with him. I told him that he needed to fire her right away. The following day, he fired her but she shows up at our doorstep. But of course, my husband wasn't home. As soon as I open the door and see that it's her, she pulls out pepper spray and sprays me in the face. I fall to the floor and she grabs me by my ankles and drags me to her car. She was like scary strong. She opened up her trunk door and actually tried to pull me inside, but she couldn't lift me. Luckily, one of my neighbors was there and started yelling at her to leave me alone. That's when she got in her car and drove off. The police pulled her over two miles away. In her car, she had a shovel and an ax. She told the cops that she was planning on aliving me so that she could stay with my stupid husband. She went to jail and my husband and I are still together. Should I get a divorce? I don't Storytime about how my parents caught me selling my undies online. Disclaimer is now my story time of sending me on Instagram. I'm extremely, extremely spoiled. My family is extremely rich. This allows me to buy whatever I want. The problem is my dad caught me sneaking out of my window, so he grounded me for two months and took away my allowance. And my allowance is a lot. My dad usually gave me $150 a week. With that money, I would go to Starbucks every single day before school, and I would also treat my friends to Starbucks every now and then, more like every day. My friends and I would go to restaurants and have fancy dinners and lunches, and I also had a car. I would also go shopping almost every single Friday with my friends. I would get manicures and pedicures, and I could basically buy myself whatever I wanted just by asking my dad for the money. But now that I was grounded, that was not gonna happen. By the way, I'm 20 now, but this was three years ago, so I was 17 when all of this happened. I can confidently say that I was like the queen bee in my high school. Number one, I was in the cheerleading squad. Number two, I was super pretty popular and had lots of money. Therefore, everyone wanted to hang out with me. I knew that I needed to maintain my status and also the life that I had become accustomed to. Not being able to go to Starbucks every single morning really made me depressed. That probably made you roll your eyes, but I said what I said. Now, there was no way I was going to go get a job somewhere. You would never catch me working at a cafe or a restaurant or something 
something like that. So I knew I had to start making my own money online somehow. I did some research and found out that people would sell pictures and video of their feet. So I signed up for this stupid website and decided to do it. The problem was that by the end of the week, I had only made $46. This was clearly not enough. So I did some more research and found out that you could actually sell your undies. So I took my last $200, went to Victoria's Secret and stocked up on undies. And this is when things get really fun. Part two is up. Part two of how my parents caught me selling my undies online. Disclaimers is not my story time I set me on Instagram. So I took my last $200, went to Victoria's Secret and stocked up on undies. I signed up to this website and within a week I had about 80 orders. So that means in one week I sold $2,000 worth of my own underwear. This is when I realized that I could charge way more than I had been. So I doubled the price and the following week I made $4,000. So here's the first mistake I made. I decided to tell my girlfriends about it and they decided to sign up and start selling their own undies. After after a month, all of my friends and I were selling our undies, and we were all making bank. This also meant that we were spending lots of money. I started buying designer handbags and shoes. One of my friends even put a down payment to a car, and her parents started asking her tons of questions. And so did mine. Part 3 is up. Part three of how my parents caught me selling my undies online. Disclaimers are not my story time was sending me on Instagram. When my parents realized that I was buying all these designer bags and shoes, they started asking me questions. I was strong and I kept my mouth shut. Now my friends on the other hand who were also selling their undies, one of them got questioned by her parents and she gave up all the information. She even told her parents that I was the mastermind behind everything and that I had told all the other girls to start selling their undies, which was true. So it was official, I had been caught. Of course, my mom's friend runs straight over to my house and she starts spilling all the beans to my parents. My dad and mom came straight to my room and started rummaging through everything. That's when they find all my purses, my shoes, had stacks of cash in my drawers, and under my mattress. All of my friends got grounded, but my parents decided to take it a step further. They were so disgusted with me that they actually kicked me out of the house. But the good news is, I had a lot of money, so I got myself a really nice apartment. So jokes on my parents. With all the money that I made, I decided to start a side hustle. I have my own employees and run my business from my house. My parents and I still talk, and my dad's even invested into my new company. When I look back at what I did, I do feel shame, but at the same time, I've become so successful from that money. What should I invest in next? Story time about how my boyfriend sent me proof that he was cheating on me by mistake. Disclaimers is not my story time. It's sending me on Instagram. My stupid, idiotic boyfriend is so dumb. Like, seriously dumb. We've been dating for six months and we met on a dating app. As soon as we became boyfriend and girlfriend, he introduced me to all of his friends. And one of his best friends happens to be a girl. A very, very good looking girl. And no, I didn't even let it bother me because he told me he loved me and he liked me. And obviously, like, why wouldn't he just date her? But here's the thing. Every time I would hang out with her and my boyfriend, she would make it so obvious that she was competing for his attention. She would wear really short crop tops and show off all her cleavage. And if a big group of us went to a bar, she would make sure to get super drunk and make a scene. And any time that she would get hit on by a guy, she would run to my boyfriend and tell her to save him. And he did everything she told him to. A few weeks ago, we were all at a house party and she made sure to only dance with him the entire night. Of course, this made me uncomfortable, so I started asking him questions. He denied everything profusely, so I just let it go. But a few days later, I get a screenshot that he obviously meant to send to one of his guy best friends about his girl best friend. And this screenshot was a picture that she had sent him, along with a few messages that they had sent each other. He told her that she looked hot in the picture and that she was hoping I would break up with him soon. What more proof did I need? Part two is up. Part two of how my stupid boyfriend sent me proof that he was cheating on me by mistake. Disclaimers is not my story time. I sent me on Instagram. In the screenshot that he sent me by mistake, I read the messages between him and his girl best friend. And the last message was her asking him, so when are you going to break up with her to be with me? Mind you, my boyfriend and I have been together for six months. We had already talked about getting an apartment together and I didn't see this coming whatsoever. So here's what I did. I took a screenshot of the screenshot he sent me and I sent it back to him. When I saw that he read it, he didn't say anything. So instead, I tried to call him. Guess what? 
he blocked me. I was at work at the time, so I couldn't leave my job. But I spent the rest of my shift running to the toilet because I had diarrhea. I was nervous and my palms were super sweaty. Mom spaghetti. But seriously, I felt sick to my stomach. After an hour, I realized that he was totally gonna ignore me. I decided to send the screenshot to her. That's when this girl told me to leave them alone and that my boyfriend didn't want to hear from me ever again. I told her that he was the one that needed to tell me that. Then she sends me a picture of him and her kissing. She was ruthless. Once my shift ended, I drove straight to his house but he wasn't there. I went to the bar where they usually hang out but they weren't there either. Finally, a few hours later, I get a message from him telling me that I just need to get over him and that the relationship wasn't going anywhere. Oh yeah, and that he was totally in love with his best friend but he didn't realize it until he started dating me. He even left all of my stuff in a box outside of his house. It's been a week and I still haven't seen his face. I want to get back with him but I realize he's a bad guy. What do I do?